so great. Jeez. Hallelujah. It's good to be here today. And I'm just the associate pastor, so my daughter said I only have to be half good. If you want to hear the pastor, he'll be here next week. And I better tie my shoe. I just, uh, I'll be falling over it. You'll think I got slain in the spirit, but I fell over the... Okay. Let me tell you a couple jokes I normally, normally do. it. so uh, what carol do the sheep sing at church? Please Navada. Now you got to laugh because they don't get any better, okay? What kind of motorbike does Santa ride? A Holly Davidson. What do snowmen wear on their heads? Ice caps. Oh. What did the stamp say to the Christmas card? Stick with me and we'll go places. And what does Santa's favorite singer? Elvis Presley. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wrote a book a couple years ago. It's called It's Hard to Do Good. You'd like to have, who would like to have this book? Yeah, it's available on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> but there, there, I have a few of them up here. Just take them after the service. They're yours. It's my Christmas present to you. So, uh, praise God. Let's pray. invite the Holy Spirit. He's already here. I'd like to invite him again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, it's such a privilege to be in your house, to be part of your house. Lord, to see these people being baptized, coming into the faith. And God, I do count it an honor to speak to your people today. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak through me, that we'd be edified and build up, that each one of us, Lord, draw a little closer to you through the words that are spoken today. And Holy Spirit, unless you do it, it ain't going to happen. I know that. But Lord, I just pray that you'd speak through me today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. I was speaking with a brother in Christ that I've known for over 50 years. I've been at it for over 50 years. And he was sharing with me some of the mistakes that he had made in his early Christian life and how it affected him and affected those that were around him. And it was still bothering him after 50 years. Think about that. You know, when he started sharing it with me, uh, actually started crying. And he made decisions out of his desire and his to serve Jesus. They weren't bad decisions. It was just that you get sometimes caught up in the moment and you make decisions and they weren't the best decisions as looking back. As babes in Christ at times we dirty our diapers. It affects us and those around us. How many have ever changed any diapers? How many ever had their diapers changed? All hands better go up, right? I've changed a lot of diapers in my day. I've had two daughters. We had few numerous uh, foster kids, so I changed diapers. And when we, I was first, when we first had kids, we didn't have any money, so we used those cloth diapers. And you had that needle that you had to watch. You didn't prick that kid, man. I was so nervous. After a while, you get used to it, though. But then come loves and come pampers, and now you're spoiled. They just cost so much money. Yeah, you kids, if you, they have baby shower. Give them money for, for uh, diapers. But it's something, you know, if we're serving God, we're babes in Christ, we make mistakes. It's part of what it is. And it just doesn't stop as a new believer, but as long as we're in this broken world, we're going to experience failures and weaknesses in our life. Is that true? You've been at it for a while. It's, it's part of living in this broken world. <clears throat> but you know, the Bible says that Christ is in us. It's a mystery. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Anything good that we do, anything good that Ken McGaffick does, is not because of Ken McGaffick. It's because of Jesus in me which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. J.P. Phillips' translation is, the secret is simply this, Christ in you. 
Yes, Christ in you, bringing with him all the glorious things that come with him. All the glorious things. Then how do we approach past failures? Think about this. A noted psychiatrist remarked that the saddest two words in the human vocabulary is this. If only. If only. People can be trapped by their failures and spend their lives saying, if only. If only I had been there for them. If only I had studied harder in school. If only I had treated my kids better and treated my wife better. If only I had spent more time with my spouse. If only I had taken the time to go to the doctor. If only, if only, if only. Many of us filled, when you can fill, with, fill in that blank over and over and over and be trapped by our own words. There's power in our words for our ben benefit or our detriment. Hope I'm not speaking too fast. I'm used to doing one minute sermons. You know, some people got a hard, pro I got a hard to stretch it out. So, <clears throat> hallelujah. Proverbs says, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. A snare is a trap that can hold you captive. People, you ever watch those uh, uh, programs where the people are out in the wild and they take, a, take their shoelace and put, I don't know how that ever works, but it works, doesn't it? You know, they catch a rabbit the next day, they have it in the snare. Well, snare's a trap. Our words can trap us. It can be a snare in our lives. If only, if only, if only. We live in the past. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. What we say can have an effect. I can make you cry by what I say. I can make you want to fight with me. Is this true? I can get you depressed. I can lift you up. There's power in words. We need to watch what we say in our lives. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 3, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. We need to change the words that come out of our mouths to change how we live, to change how we think. Look at men and women listed in. <laughs> Let me get a drink, uh, water. I did a, sir, I, I did, uh, uh, think about this. I did a funeral yesterday for a guy that was 91. He died at 91, he's turning 92 the next day. And I said, I told the funeral director, man, this guy was old. She said, the lady in the other room that's going to be laid out on Monday is 108. I said, that had to be the oldest one. She said, oh, yeah. And she lived by herself, and in the obituary, it said that she was getting ready for Christmas, decorating her house, and she died. Don't say, I say, praise God. Think about that, 108. You know, it's still going strong. Yeah. 108, wow. Look at men and women listed in the Hall of Faith, chapter 11 of Hebrews. These individuals excel in many accomplishments by their faith and action, which help, which, help, which help overcome some of those, if only, bad decisions that they made. In Hebrews 11, it talks about Abraham, the father of the faith. It said he lied twice about his wife, got in a tough situation and said, ah, she ain't my wife, she's my sister. Well, it was a half-truth, but he was lying. You ever tell you a half-truth, but you're lying? Yeah, I know. Uh, and and, and uh, he had a child with her handmaiden because he wasn't willing to wait in faith on the child of faith. And we got problems in the Middle East today because of it. These people failed forward. They failed forward. They had failure, but they failed forward. Isaac lied as well about his wife. Abraham, he lied about his wife too. David, think about David, a man after God's own heart. He had an adulterous situation with his neighbor's wife. This wasn't somebody, it was his neighbor. It was close to home. Then he had his neighbor killed. Her husband killed, because he got her pregnant. 
He fell forward, though. Jacob was a deceiver. He stole his brother's birthright and blessing. Samson, he started making bad decisions. He had a Nazarite vow. Nazarite vow was you're not supposed to be anything around that's dead. You're not supposed to ha have any wine and not supposed to cut your hair. Okay, what did he do? <clears throat> Killed a lion, was messing around with the carcass of a dead lion. Not supposed to do that. Hung out in the vineyards of Timnath. What are vineyards? Grapes. Then he started messing around with a, a woman that was, he shouldn't have been messing around with. Ended up telling her, and got his hair cut. Who cut, who cut Samson's hair? No, wrong. It was the Philistines that cut his hair. That's a Bible question, you win money on that one. Okay, <laughs> Samson, okay, Gideon. God calls Gideon. Gideon is, uh, is grinding the wheat behind a, hot, a wine press because he's afraid of the Midianites. God says, I'm mighty man of valor. He's just looking around. You talking to me? He was a man that was timid, a man that was afraid. God had to give him supernatural signs for him to go out into battle. Moses. Moses killed a man. He struck the rock in the, in the wilderness rather than to speak to it. And you know, he was somebody that God said he spoke face to face. He had failures in his life. They could have dwelled with, if only. If only I hadn't lied about my wife. If only I hadn't killed that guy. If only I hadn't done this. But rather than focusing on, if only, they failed forward. And they kept by faith seeking after God. That's what we need to do. We need to be careful that we don't get so caught up in the past that will hinder us in our life today. When God appeared to Moses, God, Moses said, when I go there, who should I tell sent me? Who should I say sent me? He didn't know. The Lord spoke to him, you say that I am, that I am as sent you. We serve a right now God. We don't serve a God that's in the past or in the future, but right now. When Jesus was talking to the disciples and to the Pharisees, they were questioning why he got the authority. They said, we're the children of Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, he says, I am. He said, I am. That's the God that we serve today. Don't be trapped by what happened in the past. By saying, if only, if only, if only. How about those Bible heroes that aren't mentioned in, in this chapter? Elijah got so depressed he wanted to die. Ran up just after having a great victory on the Mount Carmel. Jezebel said she's going to take his head. He takes off, gets so depressed, said, I'm the only one. I'm the only one around. God said, you ain't the only one. I got, I think it was 4,000. He said, 4,000 that haven't bowed their knee to Baal. You think you're the only one? Lifted him right up out of that. How about Peter? I'll never deny you, Lord. They can all take off. Hey, not me. I'm going to be right there with you, Lord. Yeah, the Lord said, hey, you ain't going to be. You're not going to be there. We all know what happened. James and John. Hey, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, man, I want to sit on one side and one on the other. They wanted a place of prominence. The people made mistakes, but they failed forward. They kept seeking after God. What do I mean by failing forward? That's if you should, or what should I say? You make a mistake or do something wrong. You own up to it. Mike Tomlin said at his new conference after the Steelers yesterday, he said, I own it. He's owned a lot of them lately. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. What can I say? You know me. You take responsibility. You take responsibility. You admit it. Learn from it. Then move forward. You admit it. You say, hey, I, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I ain't going to enumerate them before you, but I've made a lot of them in my life. And I'll probably make a few more as long as I'm around this earth. The Bible says if we have a problem, we bring it before Jesus. We're not, we're not the same as everybody else. I was praying the other day. I, I, I hate to even mention this because I'm going to start crying. 
I was praying the other day. Usually I wake up 3.30 in the morning, I try to go back to sleep. But what I, how I go back to sleep is I start thinking about golfing at Blackhawk. I said, number one, I'm good to do this. Number two, that's how I do it. But I happened to get up the other day, 3.30 in the morning. Went to the place where I pray. Rich tells us to do that. I, you know, I do that. God spoke to me because I was... Had to make some decisions on some of the things in my life. And God said, you're not like everybody else. You're not like everybody else. You need to make decisions for who you are. For who you are. When he was giving out the, the talents to people, to the one he gave 10, to another he gave five, to another he gave one. The guy that had 10 can't make decisions on the guy that has one. The one that has one can't make decisions for the guy that has 10. He has to make a decision He'll go, how God has blessed him in his life, how God has purposed in his life. Do you get what I'm saying? You got to make a decision what God is doing in your life as an individual. It says you do air comparing yourselves among yourselves. God said, you, you're not like everybody. You are who I made you to be. You got to live in that. Getting back to the two most depressing words in our if only. We need to change that confession and it'd be, it's vital for us moving forward. And instead of saying if only, how about saying next time? Next time. Next time. If only I had spent more time with them. Change the next time. Through God's help, I'm going to spend time. If only I hadn't uh, gone into credit card debt at Christmas time. Next time. I'm, not gonna, I'm going to have some plastic surgery and get rid of those credit cards. You hear what I'm saying? Next time, instead of, instead of ignoring that person on the street, instead of saying, if only I would have helped that person, next time. By God's help, I'm going to reach out and make a difference in that person's life. You hear what I'm saying? There's power in our words. In Mark 11, 22 and 23, it says, Jesus was talking to the disciples. He said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So instead of speaking failure of if only, a defeatist talk, Speak victory over your situation. Instead of speaking failure, speak success. When you do, God will honor the fruit of your lips. Is that true? That's what God's word says. We believe what everybody else says. And there's a whole lot of voices out there. We need to get into God's word and see what God's word says. I did a McMinnard uh, a few months ago on I have to. I have to. So often we say, I'll give you some for instance, I have to go to work today. I have to go to work today. I have to go grocery shopping. I have to go to the doctor. Wouldn't it be better to say, I get to go to work. There's a lot of people that would love to go to work, but don't have a job or don't have the physical ability to go to the job. You hear what I'm saying? They don't have the physical, but I have to go to the grocery store. And it's hard to go to the grocery store this time of the year, I'm telling you, you know. But we get to go. If you've been to Central America or some of these countries, they don't have grocery stores. Or they don't have, people don't have money to go to the grocery store. I get to go to the grocery store today. See how you twist it around a little bit? It makes a difference. Instead of getting depressed and going, you're excited. I get to go to the grocery store. I have to go get the doctor's exam today. There's a lot of places that don't have doctors. I get to go to the doctor today. I get to go to the doctor today. The words you can cultivate an attitude of gratitude. These words can cultivate an attitude of gratitude. There's a lot of people that would like to go to work. 
aren't physically able, like to do this and like to do that. You need to change your life. You need to change your words. It might change your life. Every morning, I thank God when I get up and I walk in the shower, I thank God that I can do that. I continually thank him for my family, my friends, my job, my privilege of, of being able to minister, the privilege of living in America. I tell people, if you're born in America, you hit the lottery. You hit the lottery. I, I thank him for an opportunity to minister. I, I thank him for my material blessings. It says in Psalm 100, 4 and 5, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Someone said, knowing who you are, Christ in you, aligning your words with his words will produce miracles, signs, and wonders every time. Leave that, if only, in the past. If you want to turn over a new leaf as we enter into 2024, quit saying, if only. Say, next time. Next time. Some things you can make a difference, some things you get, but next time. Next time. Next time, and see that God will bless you and move in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Would the worship team like to come up? What a blessing to see the seven people baptized. I was baptized in Bradish Run Lake, part of Wildwood Chapel back in, Gary, do you remember that? People baptized in Bradish Run Lake. I was baptized, that was a long time. Where's Kathy, what, did Kathy, you remember was, that? No, I was baptized over there. You were, you were baptized, yeah. They took a gang of us down to Bradish Run Lake. This would have been, this would have been uh, 71, I think. It would have been in the fall of 71. Uh, summer of 71, we went down to Brother Dan and Brother Nick and, and, and baptized. And if, you put, if you put the effort into it, it sticks. It stuck with me for all these years by God's grace. So, praise God. Thank you so much.